to give up, to know what's right and what's wrong, so that you can say no, and just to believe in yourself. Every girl is unique in every way, and we should be picking on each other because you're different too. This year I've learned how to be a good friend and communicate with each other properly. I can do what I want to do, and it doesn't matter what other people think of me. It's not okay to gossip, it's not okay to bully, and it's, and accept yourself for who you are. You're, you're special and unique. Being me is great, and no one else can be like me, and I shouldn't try to be anyone else like me. Welcome everybody to the fifth annual Limitless Potential Lunch In, benefiting girls on the run, Twin Cities. We're thrilled to have you tuning in today from the comfort of your own space. This year's Lunch In event is similar to those before, but it's also different as we embark on this new virtual format adventure. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted each one of us. And as we navigate through this new normal, we're donning our creative and adaptable hats. We're trying something new, which can be a little scary, yet very exciting at the same time. At Girls on the Run, we learn that sometimes we feel more than one emotion at a time, and that's okay. As we jump into this new luncheon adventure together, we're optimistic all will go smoothly and thank you in advance for your patience and understanding should a hiccup happen. As you can tell, I'm here in my master suite, my office, my recording studio, and whether you're in your kitchen, living room, basement, wherever, thanks for joining us today as we come together to connect with each other to be inspired and to support the girls in our community. As you settle in to enjoy your delicious lunch and hear from an amazing lineup of speakers, take a photo and share on social media using hashtag girls on the run lunch. That's hashtag GOTR lunch. I'm Carrie Tullifson, a longtime supporter, an MC, a spokesperson, a coach, and a mom to a girl on the run. This organization means a lot to me, my daughter, and our entire family. The run has given my life so much meaning, and not to mention so much fun. Being an Olympic athlete is amazing, but being a girl on the run, getting after life, and having a purpose is so powerful. I am so honored to be here today, so let's bring on our limitless potential. Again, you guys, I just want to say thank you so much for being here today and for helping us make progress towards our mission of inspiring girls to recognize their inner strength and to help them celebrate what makes them unique. Our goal today is not only to bring all of us together as a community who believes in the power of girls, but also to raise $50,000 for Girls on the Run to ensure every single girl has a place to belong today and tomorrow. Now, more than ever, we need to give these girls the skills that they learn at Girls on the Run. This goal will ensure that Girls on the Run continues to be accessible and inclusive, that any girl who is interested can join in. It's a big goal, $50,000 is a big goal but I'm confident we can achieve it because I know you all are people who believe in the limitless potential of all of our girls. Now, if you're feeling ready to donate, just check the chat box for the link. I wanna give a big thanks to all of our sponsors today. Apple Autos, Caribou Coffee, Optum Health, Mall of America, Green Bell and Walzer Automotive, as well as our very generous, in-kind sponsors. All right, now I'd like to introduce Girls on the Run, Twin Cities Program Director, Kathleen Cannon. Thanks, Carrie, and hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here with you today. I know lots of you who are joining us have been involved with Girls on the Run or are involved with Girls on the Run in some capacity, and I'm thrilled to see you. I know we have several actual Girls on the Run participants attending today, 
including my very own fourth grader and sixth grader. So hi, Girls on the Run girls. We often share a Girls on the Run name on the first day of practice. And that's just an adjective that starts with the same sound as our first name. So for example, I'm Clever Coach Kathleen. So if you're a girl in Girls on the Run, tell us your Girls on the Run name in the chat box. We can't wait to see what you come up with and you are why we're here today. And of course, if we did not have coaches, we would not have Girls on the Run. More than 1,000 fantastic adults of all genders and backgrounds signed up to lead our program this year. So we have a special silent wow for you. Do you know that one? Your fingers make the W and then your mouth makes the O. So it's a silent wow. This is for all our coaches. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yes. And if you're a coach, we wanna hear from you too. So let us know in the chat box how many seasons you've been involved. These volunteers are absolutely the heart of our program and it would not be possible without them. Now, when we say that Girls on the Run is for every girl, we mean it. And over the last year, we've been working alongside our coaches to really up our game around equity, access, and inclusion, providing adaptations to welcome girls of all physical and intellectual abilities, learning a little more about implicit bias, and also figuring out how to intentionally cultivate more inclusive environments, all kinds of stuff like that. Last season, a parent shared with me my daughter struggles with anxiety. She told me she felt truly accepted and for the first time like she belonged with her Girls on the Run team. I can't think of a bigger highlight than that. I've been thinking about that girl and girls like her who struggle with anxiety and who have found their home, have found their sense of belonging with their Girls on the Run team. We had another mom with a girl headed into sixth grade this year or headed into sixth grade next year who shared that Girls on the Run has been the most important thing on her calendar these last few years. She's learned how to be a leader, how to be more confident, and just how to live her best life. She will treasure the experiences forever. When I think about girls like that, I think now more than ever, girls need to know how to just live their best life, how to be more confident, how to step into leadership in this unique time. And as an organization, we've been in full reimagining mode over the last month. We're pleased to launch a virtual opportunity for girls and coaches to connect once a week. And you might know we've been providing at-home lessons with accompanying videos on different topics like standing up for ourselves and others, and most appropriately for right now, the dealing when things get difficult, and my personal favorite, practicing positivity. We know that in the coming months and years, our communities will be processing a lot of emotions related to this unprecedented situation. And our girls will need not just a sense of normalcy and belonging, although they will need that and we can offer that, but they'll also need a space to connect, to be part of a community where they can focus on social and emotional health in trauma sensitive ways. And I know Girls on the Run's uniquely well suited to meet those needs. And I'm grateful to be part of this important work uh, alongside you. So thank you for being here and for all you do for Girls on the Run. Over the course of 10 weeks, something magical happens. Girls become inspired, learn about friendship, develop essential life skills, and walk away with confidence they never knew they had. It means the world to me because it's the perfect balance between exercising and fun. I feel energized and enthusiastic because I know I will have fun. Here at Girls on the Run, our girls are given the tools to have these important conversations and establish a lifetime of appreciation of health and fitness through running activities, games, and discussions led by the coaches. I love every Girls on the Run lesson because you learn something new every time. I have learned healthy eating habits and pacing myself so I can run longer. Once girls develop these critical skills, each team participates in a community impact project. Girls give back through a meaningful contribution to their communities. Projects range from helping clean up school grounds, creating kindness crafts, and making blankets for children battling cancer. Girls on the Run is so much more than an after-school program. An independent study done at the University of Minnesota found 85% of girls saw improvement in confidence character, competence, caring, or connection to others. These are essential components of the lessons taught at every practice. The season culminates with a celebratory 5K, 
Girls alongside their running buddies, community supporters, family, friends, and coaches get to celebrate their season and make unforgettable memories. The 5K experience provides girls with a tangible sense of achievement, as well as a framework for setting and achieving life goals. After all, the finish line is only the beginning. My favorite part of Girls on the Run is meeting new people and making new friends. Even now, when Girls on the Run looks slightly different with at-home activities and girls connecting with their teams virtually, the impact of developing life skills, connecting with peers and mentors, and boosting physical activity is more important than ever. Girls on the Run is a transformative experience. Girls all across the Twin Cities are finding a place to belong and unlocking their limitless potential. And that is truly where the magic happens. Now I'm pleased to introduce Kelly Galbrinson from Apple Autos. Kelly is on the board of directors for Girls on the Run Twin Cities. And Apple Autos has been a supporter of Girls on the Run for several years. Their ongoing support has had a tremendous impact giving more girls in our community access to the essential life skills they need to thrive, as well as celebrate what makes them one of a kind. Here to share about their partnership and their presence at this year's Alumni Scholarship Award, please join me in welcoming Kelly. Hey, this is Kelly Gulbrinson with Apple Autos coming to you from Apple Autos. Um, first off, I just wanna say thanks to the staff of Girls on the Run for quickly transitioning this event into a virtual event and making it possible for us to all come together still at a time when connection and true leadership is more important than ever. Um, I've been fortunate enough to attend the luncheon every year now, and I always walk away feeling so inspired and empowered, and this year is no different. Um, I also just wanna take a few minutes to talk about Apple Autos and our partnership with Girls on the Run. Apple Autos is a family owned car dealership and we have five locations and eight brands in the South Metro. Uh, and we have partnered with Girls on the Run for the last five years. And we've been fortunate enough to support several events, including this luncheon, uh, Luna Fest, and also the spring and fall 5Ks. And if you've attended a 5K in the past, you might remember us from the booth with the spinning wheel or maybe the Ford Expedition that we have displayed for girls to write inspiring messages all over. Um, definitely um, our favorite activity, hands down. Um, and at these events, my favorite thing is being able to connect with women of all ages. And one of the questions I love getting when I'm at these events is, why is a car dealership here? Because I admit a car dealership is not the first thing you think of when you think of girls on the run. But at Apple Autos, we like to say it's different here. At Apple Autos, it's never just been about vehicles. Serving our community has always remained at the forefront of our values. And more specifically, we have a donor advised fund called Janus Fund. Janus Fund was created at the Minneapolis Foundation over 20 years ago in memory of Jana Gulbrinson, who passed away at age 14. Jana was known for her compassion towards others and as someone who always rooted for the underdog. The mission of the fund has since been to honor Jana's memory by providing grants specifically to organizations that support childhood health, wellness, and education. And it's through our work with Apple Auto's Janus Fund that we started partnering with Girls on the Run. And we partner with other organizations across Minnesota that are doing amazing work as well. And we could not be prouder to team up with Girls on the Run, who continues to make a difference every day in the lives of young people and women in our community. Not to mention the volunteers and the board members and the staff um, and the coaches that are a part of Girls on the Run. That's why I'm proud to be here with you today to share more about a Girls on the Run alumni with you. I'm excited to share this year's recipient of the Girls on the Run Twin Cities Star Power Scholarship for alumni presented by Apple Autos, Tegan Dahl. Tegan participated in Girls on the Run as a fifth grader in Edgerton Elementary in Maplewood. And this spring, she'll be graduating from Roseville High School with plans to further her education at Minnesota State University Mankato in the fall. Here to tell us more about her Girls on the Run experience and its impact, let's turn to an interview with Tegan and Carrie. Thanks. Well, Tegan, congratulations. How are you doing? Uh, thank you. I'm good. Yeah, I mean, this is so different, isn't it? Yeah. Well, congratulations on being awarded the Star Power Scholarship this year. We're thrilled for you. How do you feel about it? Uh, it's really exciting. And yeah, it's a huge relief and all of that. 
Yeah, you know, we're so excited to hear a little bit about your Girls on the Run experience. We'd love to ask you just a few questions to see if you can, you know, tell us why Girls on the Run was so influential to you and, and maybe some of your fun memories. So let's hear some of your experience at Girls on the Run. Um, I mean, I was in it in fifth grade in around 2012, 2013, and I did not think I was at all athletic. I did not think I could ever run a 5K, let alone two, because I did it twice. And then it just sort of, yeah, like it helped a lot with that. And I managed to run two 5Ks and I, yeah. And you loved it? Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your core values that you learned at Girls on the Run and, and maybe give us an example of how you learned from that? Um, I, we learned a lot about like how to treat people well and like stand, stand up for people and help with that. And so like they taught us a lot about like, oh, or they, they, they took concepts of like, oh, don't spread rumors. And they really like conceptualized it and help you, helped you like see it in a light you maybe hadn't before. And, and so it's, helped me like rewire a lot of things or it helped me rewire a lot of things as I was going through it mm -hmm. and and it just sort of like shaped how I view some of those things now and I yeah yeah can you finish this sentence for us because of girls on the run I uh because of girls on the run I connected with people who I didn't know and through running which is a thing I thought I was bad at yeah it was it's so fun did you ever wear any crazy hats or do anything with your team um we we all wore like or there were a few days where we all like painted each other's nails and we and a few people made like friendship bracelets and that was really fun and some days we were like okay we all have to wear pigtails now and that was when I had long hair so I could do that the camaraderie is so fun. What yes. does winning this award mean to you? And how would you use this scholarship to power your success and pursue your dreams going forward? Um, for me, this award means like uh, more chances to be independent and not have to like worry so much about particular about like paying for college and all of that. And so I, I can focus on like becoming even more of a better person and becoming strong and Better, and an independent person in the world and it will help me like focus on my studies more which will be a great relief for me yeah and, for sure yeah well we are so excited congratulations best of luck to you as you wrap up your senior year and head on to college next year yep thank you so much yeah and now we're going to pass the torch on and introduce girls on the run twin cities executive director mary uran thank you so much tegan kelly and carrie i'm grateful to be here with you today to celebrate the power of girls i have a few thank yous to make first first to our staff at girls on the run a small but mighty team thank you for your relentless commitment to girls on the run and to our board of directors thank you for your hard work and support Today would not be possible without the fantastic support of our host committee. And finally, to our associate board, your behind the scenes work made today a huge success. We know when a girl participates in Girls on the Run, she feels included, supported, and safe to try new things. She unleashes her confidence through accomplishment and activates her limitless potential. Like many other nonprofit organizations, we've experienced the devastating impact the COVID-19 pandemic has had on our ability to serve girls as we have in the past. We also know that this pandemic will have a greater impact on women and girls and marginalized communities. So now more than ever, all girls need access to programming that builds social and emotional life skills as well as physical wellness. They need mentors who will tell them that they have power and purpose. Girls need a place to belong. Today, we're gathered here to raise critical funds so that girls can access Girls on the Run in whatever form possible in the long run. I'm grateful for you for your continued support of Girls on the Run and your belief in girls. We're also gathered together today to hear from powerful women and girls in our local community. I'm pleased to introduce our moderator, Leah B. Olson, and our panelists. Leah is a former Gopher basketball player, sideline reporter for the Minnesota Timberwolves on Fox Sports North, 
game analyst for our champions, the Minnesota Lynx, and founder of her nonprofit, Rethink the Win. Sarah Moe is founder of Sleep Health Specialists, which provides sleep health education to local businesses and corporations. She's also a professor in the sleep program at Minneapolis Community and Technical College. Lola Velasquez Agualu is a litigation and investigations counsel at Medtronic and serves as chair of the Minnesota Commission on Judicial Selection. Emily Vu, a fifth grader, has been in the Girls on the Run program since third grade at Park Brook Elementary. Now it's over to you, Leah. Mary, thank you so much for that great introduction. I'm so thrilled to be here with this amazing panel and have a time to connect in with everyone, even if it is via Zoom, it's obviously really important to make this connection at this time. So first I kind of just wanted to check in with the panel and, and see how everyone is doing with their at home status with uh, their offices and doing schoolwork. And Sarah, I'll start with you. How has it been being at home? Well, it's been interesting. I am currently in my guest room because my kitchen counter is covered with my seven-year-old son's homeschooling work. So, <laughs> <laughs> Busy spots. How about for you, Lola? It's been interesting. Uh, I, have a, I have a fourth grader and a second grader, and my husband and I are both lawyers. And so I think we've got a pretty good system for kind of passing the baton, he and I, during the day. But it's, it's hard. I, you know, I, um, I read an article in the Star Tribune about a family of six the other day and the challenges they're having. And I think like most of us, I feel my privilege a lot of the days, but there are also moments where I think, oh my goodness, I can't believe that we've been doing this for six weeks. I agree. I was thinking I have two kids at home, but they're college kids. So really, I don't really see them that much because they're in their rooms all day and they're online going to school. So it would be a lot different than having some little people around the house. And, and Emily, I'm excited to ask you, what has it been like? Are you doing online school right now? And what has that been like? Um, yes, I have been doing online school. It's actually going pretty great. I usually check in with all the teachers. I usually go with during school. That's mm -hmm. perfect. I love it. And it sounds like everyone's being flexible and making the best out of a really difficult situation. So again, I'm, I'm thrilled to have the time to chat with all of you today. And the first question I kind of wanted to ask is about challenges. And I think it's something that's important for young girls to kind of look at. We know that there's going to be challenges coming through life. There's going to be challenges in work and how we kind of get through those challenges really becomes what's so important. And Lola, I'll start with you on this one. And I'm sure in your field, do you have faced a lot of challenges? And is there one that you can think of or something that kind of stands out as a challenge you faced and kind of got through? Yeah. I mean, you know, the legal profession is one of the least diverse professions still. And it's still particularly rough for women of color. Um, and so I can think of, unfortunately, I can think of a lot of examples where there were definitely times where I had to, I mean, I hate to use this phrase, but I have to lean in a lot. And that was especially true when I was working as a federal prosecutor. Um, whether it was the way that opposing counsel was approaching me, which usually was they would sometimes sort of ignore me in the room and then talk to my male colleagues and address everything to my male colleagues. I got that a lot. I was once referred to the assistant of my male colleague who <laughs> we were the same age. There was no reason to assume I was his assistant. Um, so I had a lot of that stuff happen all the time. I have to, you have to have a little bit of a thick skin. It's okay. And, and you have to, I think you have to be willing to push back in a way that's appropriate um, I didn't let those things slide. I still tried to approach it with kindness to give people the opportunity to change and get better. Um, but I didn't ignore it. Yeah, I think that's really important is how we fit in. It's not just like we're pretending like it doesn't exist, but, you know, finding ways to be your true self, but also handling it. How about for you, Sarah? You know, I've been through a very similar experience. Medicine is a very male dominated field. In fact, the first female wasn't even allowed into medical school until 1849. Uh, so especially being a female and a female of color, there are constant obstacles being thrown your way as well as um, maybe a little bit of concern or, or self-doubt whether or not you're misinterpreting things or, or behaviors from others. Uh, there's just always in the back of our minds, especially as women, 
uh, is this conversation happening because I am female or is this conversation uh, happening uh, because there are some preconceived notions about my abilities. Uh, so I guess my best advice for overcoming challenges is to just represent yourself the best way that you can uh, and be true to yourself and know that if you are doing something with a good heart and if you're doing something uh, to advance yourself and for other women and your and your friends and your communities, uh, just to continue trying your hardest and make sure that you know that there are a lot of people who are uh, rooting for you uh, and not against you and are proud of your actions. You know, in my field, when I think about it being in a male dominated, since I've worked in sports my entire career, so I've always been in very male dominated spaces. And I, I feel like when I was younger, I did try to, um, you know, not be feminine, not be myself and try to fit in like the guys. And, and as I've moved through that, I've learned to be like, no, this is what I bring to the space and I'm not a male. And, um, and it, it takes some time to do that because you have to really feel comfortable with yourself in doing that. And so um, you kind of have to give yourself a little bit of a grace period to kind of learn how to maneuver in those spaces sometimes. And Emily, let me, one of the questions I really wanted to ask you is you're in the fifth grade and what would you say is something that really inspires you? Because I know that you're probably looking at different people and wanting to do different things. So I was really curious for you, what were some of the things that may be inspiring you right now? Um, one of my, um, one of the things that inspires me right now is running. It's because it's one of my favorite exercises and I like to run to calm me down. And as a kid, I was already running every day because we, when me and my family and friends play like games, I run. <laughs> it's it's so great at such a young age that you've already learned to use exercise as a stress release, as something that's fun. Um, that I mean, that's that's pretty amazing um, that you're already doing that in the fifth grade. So as we kind of move through and we're trying to think of ways that we can inspire young girls, I would definitely say one of the spaces that I think is really incredibly important is mentors and having positive mentors in your life, um, having mentors at work and in different spaces and in school as well. Um, Lola, I'll start with you on this one. Have you had a mentor or someone in your life that's really been uh, someone that's kind of helped you work your way through, especially in your field? I've had tons of mentors always. And, um, you know, I've had some obvious ones. I clerked for a couple of judges, um, Alan Page being one of them and Ann Montgomery, both of whom were trailblazers. Um, you know, Judge Montgomery was, uh, was, a, was a, became a judge at a time when there weren't a lot of women on the bench. And she became a mother while she was a judge, which was the first uh, time that it happened in Minnesota. Justice Page, I think people know really well, broke a lot of barriers himself. And they were, they've both been important role models for me. Um, you know, Judge Montgomery has played a pretty active role in sort of advising me throughout my career and my career steps. Justice Page, for me, always models the behavior that I try to emulate in my life in the way that he has never shied away from being an advocate for communities of color. And he's taken every opportunity to do that. But I've also had great mentors who have been my cohorts and my colleagues. And I think I think this is especially true when you're in a minority group. Um, you know, for me, a lot of other lawyers are people of color in law school. You know, we didn't know a lot of other lawyers at the time. And so it was really looking to each other to try to get good guidance and support one another. So that lateral mentoring was super important and has been very important throughout my career. Yeah, that's a really great point because I think a lot of times when we think about mentorship, we really just see it as someone who's above us or who has gone before us, which is obviously really important, but that lateral piece is really critical as well. And Sarah, when you think about your career um, or even when you were younger in school, was there a person, many people, a teacher, someone who really stood out as a mentor for you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my first would be my grandmother. She was always the most amazing role model in all aspects of life, in her career, in her home life, in her ability to care for her family. Uh, she also just would constantly give me great advice, not only to make myself feel good about myself or to feel proud of my abilities, but 
uh, in, a, in an early way, kind of shaping how I would navigate my career in the future. I'll never forget when she told me some of the best advice I would ever get. And it was, you're only as good as the company you keep. And that really kind of kept me kind of grounded in knowing that I want to do something great with my time and with my life, with my community. And if I'm spending time with people who don't have those same goals or values, it's going to be detrimental to my ultimate goal. So taking that advice into my career, uh, going to school for sleep medicine, I took it very seriously. And my, my uh, students that were, were with me were all the, the same. And we did great things. Even in, in school, we started a polysomnography club, which <laughs> is the word for sleep medicine. But we started a club so everybody on campus could come and, and learn about their sleep. Uh, and then as I move forward in my career, uh, becoming an, a professor, uh, I think that at that time, my students were also my mentors, because if it weren't for these people who were just seeking more information about sleep and showing me how important sleep education was, I would never have decided to start my own business or uh, just think that I had the abilities. So I think, yes, there's a, a huge combination of people in my world, my, my grandmother, my professors and, and my students that have brought me to where I am today. I love it that it was your grandmother um, with the words of wisdom. And I think the important part for everyone, I think, to understand and realize is that none of us really go through it alone. And we need people to support us. We need all kinds of different people, be it a grandmother, um, you know, a coworker, a friend. And um, Emily, I'm going to ask you this. Do you have someone in your life um, who's helped you a lot, if that's a friend, a relative, or someone that you can talk about? Mm -hmm. My mom has been an important mentor to me. She's always pushed me um, to try my hardest and to do things I don't think I'll be good at. I'm always I'm glad that she told me that joining Girls Will Run because I made a lot of new friends and learned how to deal with emotions. I love it. I love that it's your mom because that was the answer for me as well. And I just think that's so critical for us when we when we get to start off and we have a mom who's giving us great advice and. And as I moved through my career, um, it was for me, it was a little bit difficult finding mentors because when I started in sports broadcasting, there were not a lot of women in sports. And so it was hard for me to find female mentors and certainly difficult to find women of color. That has changed quite a bit over the years. And so, and then I myself now have become mentors to young um, broadcasters coming through. And it just, um, you know, it all kind of, what goes around comes around. And so it's so nice to see that um, so many people kind of delving in to help one another because that's really the way that we all get through. So let me move it to one of the things I think is also really critical for young girls to think about is kind of leaning on what their strengths are. And I think one of the things we tend to do as females is sometimes we're always worried about the negative pieces of ourselves instead of showing up and letting people see what our strengths actually are. And um, Lola, as I think about you in the law field, I'm sure that um, a, a lot of times you, you, you're leaning on what your strengths are and trying to kind of not think about, you know, um, whatever maybe some of the negatives are. So if you could speak a little bit on using your strengths in your field, that would be great. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the, one of the last cases I tried when I was still at the U.S. Attorney's Office was a really contentious and stressful trial. And, um, and it's hard to be in that adversarial environment all of the time and not bring some of that with you. So I think some of the things that serve me well are, you know, well, maybe the biggest thing is I'm a very upbeat person. Um, I'm, I will always find something to laugh about. Even sometimes I laugh at how bad things are. Um, and that has served me really well. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, there aren't a lot of things that get me down and keep me down. Um, and I think also being undeterred when things are hard. I'm not somebody who gives up. Um, I, will, I will stay the course and I will ask for help and I will reach out. So when things have been hard, um, you know, I think being able to ask for help or tell someone how you're feeling is an important strength because that's how you draw support from others. Um, so, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty good at staying really upbeat and laughing and finding something to laugh about. Um, but when I'm not, when I'm struggling, 
I, I'm comfortable telling someone I'm struggling. Um, I'm comfortable saying I need help. I need to walk. I need, I need someone to connect with. Um, my husband was a great source of that for me during that last trial in the morning, I would say, I need a five minute pep talk. And he would do that for me. So I think, um, you know, being unafraid to ask for help is, is a really important strength, no matter what you're trying to do in life. I'm so glad that you brought that up because I feel like that's hard for so many of us to ask for help. And it's, it's, it's kind of a crazy thing that we have that we're yeah. just, I can do this and I'm so strong and I don't need other people's help. And it's, it's, that is a strength to be able to say, Hey, yeah, I could um, use someone to lean on today. And Sarah, have you found that at all in your career as you're coming through that um, you've had to lean on your strengths to kind of get through in particular in your field? Oh, absolutely. And fascinatingly enough, that desire to do everything is such a female trait. It is instinct for us. It is innate because neurologically, uh, it is kind of our our history to be the caregivers and the, the ability to keep families alive kind of falls on the female's shoulders. Uh, and so it historically, it does tend to come out more for with young girls and, and women to say, you know what, I can handle everything. I can do everything. I don't need to ask for help. But it really is counterproductive. I love that you brought that up because asking for help is something that is going to not only help you and your situation, but the person who is being asked is going to feel honored that you came to them um, and, and requested that assistance. So yes, there are so many great things that can come from having the positive attitude and and remaining undeterred. Uh, I also love the practice of gratitude. I think that's a strength of mine that I generally feel very grateful for a lot of things. And I, I really kind of take stock of, of my gratitude and things that I do have that are positive and, and going my way uh, because it does really kind of change your attitude uh, and kind of change your perspective as far as daunting tasks and uh, kind of moving forward with what it is you're attempting to accomplish. So I think that's a strength of mine, being able to feel grateful for, for some little things. And it definitely helps to assist to get me into a positive attitude place. Thank you for mentioning gratitude. Cause I think in particular in the times that we're in right now, having gratitude for like small things, you know, that we have a home, that we have a space that we can work from just these pieces that really, really have helped me get through um, the last month or so. And I, I think you're absolutely right in that, that it is a strength to be able to kind of stop and step back and say, yeah, I have to be thankful for these little things that are really helping me right now. And when we, when we think about gratitude, um, it also leads me to connections and making connections in our communities, um, connections at work, connections with family, and, and really, kind of speaks to teamwork and how important that is. And I was curious, Lola, in your work, because I know you probably work a lot alone um, doing what you need to do. Is it difficult to make connections or kind of have that teamwork mentality um, as you're kind of needing to focus in on what you have to do individually? So I actually work more in teams than on my own. Um, and that's been true throughout my career. Um, and as a prosecutor, I was working usually with federal law enforcement partners who had worked up a case and paralegals, legal assistants, and then often other lawyers, depending on how big the case is. And now I work a lot with other lawyers as well. So um, if I wasn't in an environment where I was working with a lot of other people, that would be hard for me. I'm, an, I'm such an extrovert and I draw my energy from being with other people. That's part of how I find things to laugh at. I might not laugh as much if I was by myself. I can only crack myself up for so long. Um, so, you know, for me, being in a team, that's, I don't think I would have gone into the law if I thought I was going to be working in a very solitary environment because it's so important to my happiness. Okay, that's interesting. Yes, I was thinking that you had spent more time alone, so I'm glad that you have that for your extroverted self. And <laughs> yeah. is, Sarah, how about you in, in, in the medicine and sleep medicine? Um, is that a world that you're with people all the time, connecting in, or how do you kind of see teamwork in your world? Yeah, so it's actually transformed in the last 15 years uh, when I first got boarded, I was very hypocritically working overnights, diagnosing sleep disorders for patients, and that was very one-on-one. -on -one. So I would do the setup, get them to bed, and then um, spend the night with these individuals uh, checking out their sleep and, and seeing if there was a sleep disorder to diagnose. I loved the intimacy of that time. I loved that 
ability to be the driving force of, of hope for a patient to, to get answers. Uh, but as my career transformed, I then became a professor. And now with my business, I do corporate sleep education. So I go into companies and teach classes on sleep for teams. And as Lola was saying, that energy is amazing. I love going in and, and seeing these different teams and how they kind of collaborate together and interact together. And the main goal is to help all of them with their sleep. But you can tell with the culture of these corporations, uh, just the importance of that mind frame of, you know, together we are all better. Anything can be accomplished either more efficiently or more effectively with positive teamwork. Uh, and it's true. I know it, it seems like such a cliche that teamwork makes the dream work, but <laughs> cliches are, are, are they become popular for a reason. They're usually true. I love it. So Emily, I wanted to check in with you and see if you had um, a time where you can think about a connection with a friend um, or family member or someone at work that was really important to you? Um, I made a connection with one of my friends when we were at school. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I was just going to ask, and how did, the, did that make you feel good, and how did that impact you? That connection made me feel good mm -hmm. because... That connection was really strong between us. Yeah, and I think that's so key for all of us to realize is, and I think we're probably realizing it at this time, how much we need each other and how much connection matters. And if it's um, us on a Zoom call or if it's connecting through um, face to face when we're able to do that again, um, it's kind of for me, for sure, kind of what brings me back to life again, what makes me happy, and um, and obviously very critical to all of our health in knowing that um, we have safe and good connections in our lives. So I'm very curious, and we can just kind of go around the horn and see like who, who are the people that really inspire you? Because I know um, as we're kind of working through our lives and careers, there's certain people that you always look to. Is there someone right now that you're seeing in the work field? Doesn't even have to be in your career, just someone who you look at and think, wow, that person really inspires me. And I'll, I'll start with you, Sarah. Absolutely. One of my favorite people in the world is Nancy Lyons. For those of you who do not know who she is, she is the CEO of Clockwork, which is a local Minnesota uh, digital interactive company. Uh, she's also a nationally renowned speaker and advocate for human beings. Her whole motto in life is to just be a good human. Uh, she speaks to uh, kindness to others, uh, advocacy for minorities. Uh, she started the uh, diversity tech call where she challenged other companies in the tech field in Minnesota to commit to hiring more minorities, interviewing them and bringing them into companies. Um, she also has just been a mentor in so many ways in how she interacts with other businesswomen in our community, uh, just how she treats people, how she has the best sense of humor. She really is just one of my favorite humans and uh, one of my favorite mentors. I love it. And how about for you, Lola? Is there someone in who inspires you? Yeah, I mean, you know, there's I can think sort of large level and small as well, or not small, but sort of famous and not. And um, I mean, Justice so Sonia Sotomayor is somebody who very much inspires me. Um, I, when I was in law school, I was working at the NAACP Legal Defense Fund with a lawyer who had clerked for her. He took me to go and meet her and have lunch with her and listen to arguments before she was, she obviously wasn't on the Supreme Court then, but she has something in common other than being Puerto Rican, which we both are, but we're also both type one diabetics. And um, that was a huge, a huge moment for me, just sitting down and having lunch with her and both of us having to check our blood sugars at the same time and give our insulin at the same time. I hadn't seen a lot of people at her level like that who were like me and had type one diabetes. And so instead of asking her all these questions about the law, I then asked her a million questions about how did you try cases while you had diabetes? What if your blood sugar got low in the middle of a trial? What if your blood sugar gets low when you're in argument, oral argument? And she was great about answering my questions and telling me, giving me really practical advice. One of the things she said to me was, never be afraid of your, never, never be afraid to ask for what you need, which is something that I've carried with me always, and never be embarrassed 
of having diabetes. Because if you let yourself be embarrassed of having this disease, you won't ask for the help that you need and it will hold you back. And for me, it was super empowering at a time when I needed it, where I was going to go out in my career in the law and try to try cases myself. There were times over that time where I had to say, your honor, I need five minutes because I I need to check my blood sugar and I'm going to need to drink some juice. And she really helped me feel like that was going to be okay. Wow. That's really, really inspiring. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Emily, is there someone who inspires you? Yes. Um, That person that inspires me is my principal because all those years I've been to Bart Brook, he has treated everybody the same. And he also gives us good advice to um, keep on going and chase your dreams. Mm-hmm. Wow, I love it. And I love that it's your principal. That's so cool that um, you have this great environment and this cool school that you're going to. So that's awesome. So our last question that I'm going to um, go around and ask is, you know, we know that Girls on the Run is really about activating young girls' limitless um, potential. And so we want young girls to believe they can do whatever it is they want to do. So if you had one piece of advice or one, you know, call to action for young girls that they could, you know, start doing as soon as they listen to this video, what would that be? And Sarah, I'll start with you. I think the biggest thing that we can do is to take care of ourselves. You can't properly care for others if you are not doing your best yourself. So always remember if you are working towards a goal in your community, if you are hoping to do better in school, if you have something that you're hoping to accomplish, your baseline really does start with caring for yourself. You should always be unashamed to take care of yourself first. Uh, If if that means uh, taking a a run when you need to step away, taking a nap if you're feeling tired, uh, be unapologetic in your care for yourself because you're just going to be the best for you and everybody you're attempting to help that way. Lola, how about for you? I would say be unafraid. Don't be afraid to do something by yourself. There might be something that you want to do, but that none of your friends want to do. Don't be afraid to just sign up alone. Um, Don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask a question. Don't be afraid to say, I don't understand. Um, Don't be afraid to ask for help. And don't be afraid to change your mind if you decide that you've gone down one path and want to go down another. I love it. Okay, so both of you said exactly what I was going to say. I started with yours and I thought, oh, I'll say don't be afraid. (laughs) Then I went to yours. So I'm going to echo those views. Absolutely. Cause I, I agree. Cause I feel like when I was younger, I was always scared to make mistakes. I was scared to step outside of the box that I was in. And, um, and so that's, that would be what I would want to share as well is just try to be fearless as much as you can and, and step out of things. And when you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, um, that's when you know that you're growing as a person. And, um, Emily, my last question for you is, um, Is there anyone um, or any piece of advice that you have for girls your age right now or anything that you would like to say to other young girls your age? Mm -hmm. Um, Don't let fear get in your way and keep on trying your best to reach your goals. I love it. And I thank you so much, Emily, for being on this panel because it's certainly very brave of you and I wish that I was doing things that you're doing when I was your age, because it's, it's so cool to see you stepping out there and, and stretching yourself and doing all this really cool stuff. And, and Sarah and Lola, I want to just thank you so much for your time. Um, thank you for sharing your amazing stories and your amazing careers. And I agree with you, Sarah, that naps are awesome. I just wanted to <laughs> acknowledge that. <laughs> and um, so thank you all so much for your time. And I really appreciate it. Thanks. It's been fun. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. Well, now I'm pleased to introduce Minnesota's 50th Lieutenant Governor, Peggy Flanagan. The Lieutenant Governor is a citizen of the White Earth Nation of Ojibwe, is a St. Louis Park native and a proud graduate of St. Louis Park Public Schools and the University of Minnesota. Her career is built on standing up for children, for families, communities of colors, American Indians, and low-income and working people. So please join me in welcoming the Lieutenant Governor. 
Hi everyone, this is Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan. I'm so excited to be part of your digital luncheon. Like a lot of things, this event looks different than how we'd originally planned. I want to start by lifting up each and every one of you. It's hard to go from seeing your friends and teachers every day to learning from a screen in your house. And it's hard to not be together when you're running or for big events like today. Building self-esteem through pushing yourselves to try new things, making personal connections, and being part of community is the magic of Girls on the Run. While not all of that is possible during this time of social distancing, the magic of Girls on the Run is still happening. I'm grateful for all of you participating today and for continuing to remain connected to this organization that is such a phenomenal resource for girls and young women. And I'm grateful for all of you making the effort to stay home, protect our vulnerable community members and slow the spread of the virus. Your efforts matter. You are part of a bigger action to keep our community safe. Thank you. When I was a young girl, I wasn't planning on growing up to be the Lieutenant Governor, but I learned that my voice and my story were powerful. I learned that I could use my voice to advocate for myself, my loved ones, and my community. I know that each of you can do the same thing. Girls and women can lead, should lead, and are leading. We lead with compassion, with empathy, with intelligence, and our story. Thank you for participating in today's Girls on the Run luncheon, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of this day. Chi miigwech. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for sharing that message about the power of girls with us today. We are grateful for your leadership through this incredibly tough time. My name is Ledrian Roby, and I am a proud Girls on the Run board member and former Girls on the Run coach. I have also seen the impact of Girls on the Run programming firsthand as the Assistant Superintendent for Richfield Public Schools. We have two more things to do here today and we'll have you out of here right at 1 p.m. The reason we are here today is to raise $50,000 so that all girls in the Twin Cities in Greater Minnesota have the opportunity to build social, emotional, physical wellness skills, skills more critical now than ever before. Funds raised today will ensure Girls on the Run will be around for the long run and that girls can easily access and be fully included in the Girls on the Run programming. A generous group of donors, including the Murphy Family Foundation and Barbara and Jack Rees have offered $20,000 matching grant today. That means that anything that you give today up to $20,000 will be doubled. If you came here today to sponsor one team in the fall, you can now sponsor two teams. If you are planning on sponsoring a girl for the season at $175, you can double your impact today. Your generous support today will help Girls on the Run build new teams and new communities, reach more girls where they're at, launch new programming, including digital at-home lessons, and give caregivers and girls a new way to connect, and Girls on the Run connect for virtual coaching and team practice. Recruit, train and support volunteer coaches on these digital platforms and remain committed to equity, access, inclusion, every step along the way. Now is the time. Your donation at any level will let girls unleash their limitless potential, will give girls a place to belong and will provide access to programming to any girl interested. Donating is easy. Simply click the link in the chat window or go to the one cause on your phone. Once in one cause, select make a donation from the left side of the window. Giving at a meaningful amount to you today. And remember, your gift will be doubled. Thank you for your generosity. Now I'll pass it along to Carrie Tolleson to wrap things up. Before we wrap up today's event, yep, there was an outfit change, and yes, I have a new co-host. Hey guys. This is my girl on the run, Ruby, and we have one exciting announcement to share with you. This is breaking news, you heard it here first. Girls on the Run is hosting the Alaris Mortgage Girls on the Run Spring Year K Your Way on May 30th and May 31st. This virtual event can be completed on your own time and in your own place, your neighborhood, even your backyard or living room. Find your happy pace, that might be running or biking a 
5K, 3.1 miles, a family relay run, a one mile walk or run, or a 45 minute dance party. This is a great chance for our community to move together and feel connected while being physically apart. Run, walk, roll, bike, dance, jump. Find whatever works for you. As long as you can maintain appropriate social distancing, you can do it. And be sure to join us for the virtual festival on all social media channels. We'll have a live kickoff on Saturday, May 30th at 9 a.m. and fun surprises in the weeks leading up to the event. Registration is free and open to all ages, genders, and paces. You can register at the link in the chat box right now and directly on the Girls on the Run Twin Cities website. And there we have it. We've enjoyed sharing the last hour with you as we honor the incredible women and girls in our community and raise critical funds for Girls on the Run. Remember to visit the One Cause link in the chat box or on your phone to donate what you can today. If you participated in the silent auction or mystery box games, the prizes you've won will be mailed to you in the coming weeks. Thank you so much for joining us today and for your generous support. Giving you a Superstar Energy Award. I hope you have a great rest of your day. And remember, Girls, Girls on the Run is so much fun. Woo! Bye. Thank you.